coming up, we're heading to Cowfish for a dining review on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig. I am joined alongside today by my co-host, Rhino, who's currently behind the camera. Uh, he will be eating with me because today we are heading to the Cowfish here at Universal City Walk. A, we don't eat at the City Walk restaurants enough, and B, I feel like lately we keep getting asked about the cowfish specifically, and we've been really hesitant to actually recommend it to people because service has not always been stellar, and the food can sometimes be, a, you know, not the best. It, it hasn't really ever disappointed. It's just been kind of meh. So hopefully that will change today or we will feel justified in our thoughts about the cowfish. And we're going to do that in a second. Hopefully there's not a wait because it is a very busy week right now. It is Easter week. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed for us that this all goes well. Uh, before we get to that, though, I do want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money. You get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. To so head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote. Okay, now that that's over, we are going to head over to the cowfish, which is right behind me. Uh, hopefully, it won't be too long of a wait or no wait at all, and we will get some of that sweet cow and fish. They said outside it was going to be about a 30-minute wait, but basically we walked away, came back 10 minutes. 10 minutes, so not too bad. We're seated on the second floor up here, uh, and um, we've ordered some things. We've started with an appetizer. And uh, we went with Big Al's Yellowtail, which is uh, $12. So this is going to be slices of yellowtail shashimi topped with thinly sliced jalapeno pepper with ponzu dipping sauce. And I've got to tell you, I have never seen yellowfish cut so thin, paper thin. It's like a whisper of it. So do you mind? I'm going to go in and just try this if you, if you don't mind here. So don't eat the leaf, right? Just, just going in with the jalapeno on top here. It comes in a, what is the largest, is the largest bowl of crushed ice. Ooh, submerge it a little bit. That's the ponzu sauce right there. Okay, here we go. Tastes like ponzu sauce, that's for sure, because I definitely put a lot on there. Um, but, I mean, the yellowtail is pretty nice. For me, yellowtail isn't like a super... I don't get like, it's more of a texture than a flavor thing with this one, but I like the jalapeno on it. It gives it a little, it gives the fish a nice texture. And I tasted like no spice in the jalapeno. You're just getting kind of the sweetness of the jalapeno with that. So I'll be interested to see what you think of this one, Craig. I'm no sushi expert at all, but uh, I'm gonna basically take this first bite just uh, as it is without any ponzu sauce or soy sauce, just the yellowtail and the jalapeno, just to try to, you know, see if it at least tastes fresh. So, here we go. The yellowtail is sliced so incredibly thin, but it's still nice, you know. It, it, uh, it definitely does have a freshness with it. And there are a little bit of seeds on the jalapeno, uh, but not enough to actually cause some spiciness. So I really would like this with a little wasabi as well too, just because I like to spice things up a little bit. I'm gonna take one more bite here, but add in the ponzu sauce. You know what? I actually take back what I said about the wasabi. It would be a nice to have, but I think the sweet and salty you get with the ponzu sauce mixed with the yellowtail and the jalapeno, it actually makes it really pleasant. So uh, yeah, the the fish is so thinly sliced that for uh, $12, you know, you're not getting a lot here, but there is a quality to it. And outside of this appetizer, I wanna say, I love the fact that the water glasses here are so massive because it's super hot here. It's super busy at Universal, you know, barely walked around and already got overheated, so to have a nice big glass of water that's this big, man, that's real nice. 
for my main um, entree, we'll say, I went with the What's Shaken Tuna Bacon Sandwich for $22. This is a seared, rare, blackened, yellowfin tuna, applewood smoked bacon, iceberg, jalapenos, marinated Roma tomatoes, slaw, and a spicy mayo served between grilled spring roll wrapper buns that are filled with kani and sushi rice, served with house season fries, how it normally comes, but there are other sides. So I went with edamame. I felt like I, uh, I don't know, it just felt like it was more in tune with the sandwich. But I find this to be like, for me, one of the more unique items on the menu. Um, I, I haven't been here in years, so I haven't had this in a couple of years, but I am very excited to have this. It's cool how they make this like sushi, like the rice buns I really like. I'm just gonna go in for it. Mm. This has some kick to it. What I like about this restaurant so far is that the spicy mayo is actually spicy mayo. And then um, I definitely bit into some fresh jalapenos, which are very nice, very crunchy, and definitely pack some heat. Um, the seared tuna in here has a really nice taste to it that doesn't get lost either. And I just I just love this sandwich. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I am a big fan. I'm gonna take another bite actually before I, before I say anything else. If I could figure out how to do this with the rice at my house, I would probably try it, but it would in no way come out nearly as good because I'm afraid about ever doing anything with like sushi grade tuna, but um, the edamame came with a little bowl of edamame and I'm happy to report it is cooked and good. When Kylie and I used to live over by Universal, we would come over here all the time. So I've had a lot of the burgers, and the one I've probably had more than any other is the jalapeno popper showstopper because I love jalapenos. I could eat them all day and all night. Uh, and then I also would usually get the cowfish has officially left the building, which is their, uh, their peanut butter burger that they have there. We've done videos on that before. Uh, the, What's Shaken Tuna Bacon was one of my favorites. I, I just, I've eaten a lot of things on here. One thing I don't think I've ever had, which is why I ordered it today, was the Black and Brie. And this is a burger that is with brie cheese, fresh blackberries, thyme infused honey, sake marinated Asian pear, and micro greens served on a brioche bun for $21. Comes with a side, of course, the side options, I know Rhino mentioned some of those. Uh, they come with either french fries or uh, one of the following items for an additional $1.50. That includes seaweed salad, edamame, bacon coleslaw, sweet and spicy Thai cucumbers, sweet potato fries, or gr grilled vegetables. I opted for sweet potato fries because it's one of the things I used to always get, so I wanted to make sure that the fries were still the same quality. I always had problem with uh, just the regular french fries here. One fell on my plate. It was really hot and it was really tasty. I wish I actually would have ordered those, uh, but the bacon coleslaw, that almost got me. I almost went there. But black and brie. Very excited for this because I do like a sweet and salty combination. I'm worried it might be a little too sweet, but we'll just have to find out. For having the blackberries and honey on this, I thought it was going to be aggressively sweet but I can report it absolutely isn't. I could use something a little bit more savory to balance it out than just the burger itself. The burger doesn't feel like it's seasoned too incredibly well, but it is cooked perfectly. I asked for it medium, and I, this is exactly how I like a burger. I can't complain there. The brie cheese just kind of mellows this all out. The pear is giving it a little bit of a crisp, so that way it's uh, you know balancing out the texture of the overall burger. I, I think I'm digging this. I think I'm digging it. And as for the sweet potatoes, I'm gonna dip one in some spicy mayo because why not? Sweet potato fries hold up. So we still have more to eat. We're gonna, I think, try each other's food. And then also we got some burgushi that we have to get to. So stick around. As Craig mentioned earlier, we are being little piggies while we are here, and we got the bison burgushi, which goes for $21. That is seasoned bison and roasted red peppers wrapped in sushi rice and soy paper, dusted with tempura flakes, topped with pickled green tomatoes, chipotle aioli, scallions, and cotija cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, I'm gonna take one just by itself. I don't know if I expected it to have rice on it. So that threw me for a little loop for a second there. 
Um, but I gotta say, like, in terms of it being like a sushi roll, but also a burger, like the textures are all there. I thought it was maybe gonna be a little bit weird, but the way the, the ground beef is inserted in here is actually pretty interesting. Um, I, I don't know that this has really, I think the tempura flakes might be missing on ours. Um, Cause there's not really like that little bit of crunch to it that I was kind of expecting. I'm gonna do one more piece and then let Craig try, but I'm gonna dip it in my spicy mayo just like I do my regular sushi. I don't hate it, but we did let it sit for a while and I don't think this is something you wanna eat cold. Or maybe you are supposed to. I don't know, I gotta think about it. You try it and you tell me what you think. I did not add anything to this part of the, the food review. I apologize, everybody. This burgushi roll was my choice because I love bison, so I will feel terrible if I steered us completely wrong with it. Rhino is correct. I do not see or taste any tempura flakes on it or feel that texture, so it's, it's not on there or I don't know what happened to it. Uh, he also pointed out he doesn't notice any red peppers in there, and I thought maybe it was in the bison mixture, and I'm not, I'm not seeing that either, so I, it feels weird that they'd miss two things like that, but I don't know, maybe, maybe the recipe's a little bit different from what's on the menu. That could always happen, but ultimately, you know, yeah, we, we probably left it sitting for like an extra 10 minutes, but uh, we took a lot longer than we thought we would eating through our actual, uh, you know, our sandwiches that we got. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm still kind of liking this. You know, the, the spicy mayo and the cotilla cheese is bringing a lot of the flavor. Uh, the bison, kind of like the burger feels a little bit under seasoned, but not, not in a bad way. Um, you know, I, I, the hard part is we wanted to do one of the burgushis. And I, this is the one I obviously chose just because none of the other ones really like jumped out to me. It's like, you know, I remember having those. I want to have them again. I, I just don't know which other one I would have done between like the, the all-American bacon double cheese burgushi or the filet roll, taste explosion roll or the filet and lobster roll. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It, it was a tough one, but I'm glad we tried it. I don't think I would do this again, but I might feel differently after we're done eating it all. You know, all in all, I was, uh, when Craig said, let's go to Cowfish, I was like, oh yeah, I haven't been there in a while and I want to get that sandwich that I always love, which I did enjoy. But I'm glad that we tried, like I'm glad that we shared meals because I also tried your your burger and there was something, like I'm not a mix, um, I don't like to mix uh, fruit with like savory things. Like I like to keep those things separate, but I actually enjoyed the burger. I thought the burger was pretty well made. I liked that the, the the um, the pears gave it like a little crisp and that like I was worried about the honey and like Craig already said it wasn't it didn't I could barely taste that part but I thought it was a pretty decent burger I was happy with my sandwich I thought our appetizer was like I don't know that I would get it again but I liked it like I I thought it was very light and refreshing and if you were having like that in a cocktail maybe I think that would be a, that would like be a good pairing there. Um, and then ultimately, I agree with uh, Craig's assessment of our bison burgushi. I would actually try one of the other ones because I, I think I've only had burgushi like one other time and it was only like two bites of somebody's rolls. It was like one that used to have like potato sticks on the outside or something like that. I'm, I could be misremembering it um, incorrectly, but so I have to say that this experience was actually very good. Our server, she was wonderful too. So I'd, I'd, I'd be like, yeah, let's go back here and do it again. So I feel like the things that were like my holdup before faded away with this experience. So I enjoyed it. The only thing I was really, I don't want to say disappointed in, but underwhelmed with this meal really was the burgushi. And I, I'll chalk it up to what we chose in terms of the burgushi. I don't want to just blanket statement say like, oh, they're all just underwhelming. I, I think it was specifically the one we chose. Uh, my burger, I did not change my feelings on that. Uh, it's still slightly under seasoned, but that nice sweet and savory mix that I really wanted. Uh, as for the what's shaken tuna bacon, that was one of my favorites, as I said. Uh, it still holds up. That thing tastes exactly like it did the first time I had it. It is a classic, it's a staple. Uh, I know some people might be a little scared off from the seared tuna because there are some people 
that, you know, just don't get the options to eat it. When they think tuna, they think, like, you know, tuna salad, canned tuna, uh, that that style, not necessarily, like, raw tuna or just, you know, sea- seared to still have it be rare but uh it's it's an awesome sandwich and there was there was so much spice to it just from the tuna alone not even once you add in all the other ingredients with it just just really really solid and we obviously ordered a lot of food like not even messing with desserts and drinks but uh if we would have ordered an appetizer or a sushi roll that was bigger than what we got with the big al's yellowtail uh, I would just be disgustingly full. So I like that we still got that that sushi flavor, but not feeling terrible about it with the with the portion size on that. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really satisfied. And as Rhino mentioned, uh, service here was absolutely fantastic. Uh, our our server made sure that everything was running along without rushing us. Um, you know kept the drinks filled at all points of time super super friendly so i i didn't know how it was going to go because it is a busy week here at universal i half expected it to just take forever and that was not the case at all and you know it's there are open tables here but it's 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 still it's still busy to an extent so i I just think a lot has changed since the last time i ate here and that that makes me happy because it'll make me start recommending this again and also coming back here myself because I did definitely get scared away from it for a while and you know if all the servers here are like our server Kim then not gonna have any problems with that but our grand total was before our annual pass discount was $83.60 then after our annual pass discount that brought it down to $75 sorry, $71.05. And, you know, after tip, that got us to $87. So, uh, I mean, we ate a lot, really. I would say maybe split an appetizer if you're even going to do that. But uh, the portion size on the sandwiches and the burgushi, at least, are big enough that I feel like you don't necessarily need to order a lot of extras with it. You can, but you're probably either going to feel disgusting or you might be taking stuff back to your hotel your house wherever you're going Uh, they give you a lot of food portion size is not a problem here but ultimately i know rhino would recommend coming here in the future i would recommend coming here in the future uh don't you know don't uh don't just avoid this place like we've kind of hinted at in the past uh it's uh it's solid right now i really enjoyed this but that's going to do it for this dining review we hope you enjoyed it and if you did please if you're watching this on youtube hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel leave comments questions and video suggestions in the comment section Uh, if you're listening to this subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a rating and review if possible if you want to support us more and book a vacation through dreams unlimited travel get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com that's it again for this universal dining review we hope you enjoyed it And we will see you again soon on another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name.